As Henley, England gets set to host rowing's Royal Regatta, we find out what it takes to make the Cox date. I suppose if you know anything about rowing, there's sort of three categories in, in some ways. You've got the, the boat race, Oxford against Cambridge. It's a long distance race. You've got uh, international rowing, that's six lanes, um, like the Olympics, World Championships. And then you've got domestic rowing, and Henley Rory Gatter comes at the top of that list. Henley is the ultimate river regatta in the world. The Olympics, of course, perhaps the World Championships have more status, but nothing's got the history of Henley. Henley is a very unique race because the Olympics, for example, is, is a six lane race. So you'll be you against five other crews. Here at Henley, it's just a one on one thing. It's more gladiatorial. It's sort of more golf match play in some ways. You're playing against somebody else. You're trying to beat them. Here we are literally one on one and it's the winner takes all. And it's a knockout. So if you lose, then you're out. In the Olympics, you can have a dodgy heat and you go to the repechage, you can come back to the semi-final and you might just scrape through and da 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 da. Henley, every race, all that matters is that you're better than the opposition. Preparing for a rowing competition is all consuming. As well as arduous sessions on the water, strength and fitness building in the gym is integral to a rower's training regime. The fitness aspect of rowing is very, very important because predominantly it's a strength endurance sport. So above all else you have to be very, very fit um, in terms of your endurance, but also there's an element of power and strength in it. So we do lots and lots of miles to hit the endurance aspect of it, but also lots of heavy weights so that we can get lots of force into the rowing stroke. As a rule, we have to make sure that we back up our training on the water with training in the gym. So we have to do quite a lot of weights and quite a lot of uh, use the rowing machines quite a lot just to make sure that we are getting the most out of our training. So we come down maybe three or four times a week to use the weights gym and it changes. So we do some lower body, some upper body. But it's very important, very, very important that we make sure that we get our strength up in here. I think people, people don't really like to admit that there's a competitive element in the gym, but Everyone is very aware of what everyone else is doing in the gym. So for example, if someone's lifting 100, say, someone in the corner could come over and try and do exactly the same thing. Um, but then if people, people know their limits, so no one's silly. But then very, there is like an underlying kind of alpha male type thing in the gym. <laughs> Rowing is a fitness sport. It's very much a training sport. The fitter you are, the better you're going to perform. But you may not be the best technician, but if you're fit and strong, you are going to win quite a lot of races. With rowing teams at Henley featuring up to eight rowers, success ultimately lies in the teamwork of those on board. Precise, synchronised movements is essential to a team's success at any regatta. Trying to get eight guys um, rowing very, very precisely together is quite a hard thing to do. To get everyone rowing together, there's a different element of things we do. We do a, like a lot of kind of mileage, we call it, just endless kind of plodding up and down and as a nature of doing that, you kind of subconsciously just start moving together and rowing together. We also have biomechanics that we can put on the boat and that measures where you're applying your power and when. So by looking at that, you can tell individuals to do things differently to help make the crew go well together. You need the strength, but you also need the precision. And some people, some people are stronger, obviously. So the middle of an eight are for the big, the, the, the oxen, really, of the rowing world, the big guys. And, and then the outsides, you can put smaller people in who are quite precise because you need the technical aspect of it as well. Basically, they have to be like a ballet dancer, um, rowing in time with lots of synchronicity, but they also have to be producing lots and lots of wattage per, per person. Despite the individual requirements needed to be a world-class rower, at the end of the day, it's the joint effort that counts. Rowing is often called the ultimate team sport and the reason for that is every constituent part of a rowing boat has got to move in perfect time and one of the reasons that you train for so long together over months and years preparing is you've got to get that synchronised movement. You put the blades in exactly the same time as everyone else in the crew. You're all levering the boat past that position all together. You're all releasing at the same time. You're all having the recovery at the same time. Uh, and so that brings a sort of a, a, a different dynamics into it because you know you have to rely on everyone in the crew, every stroke of every outing and of every race to try and get across the line first.